Hello children, this is the part 2 of the chapter heat. Now in the first part we saw about conduction, convection, radiation, good and bad conductors of heat. Now let us see what will happen to the substances when we heat them. So we are going to see the expansion and contraction of solid substance due to heat. Whether they will expand or whether they will contract when we give them heat. So what we have to do is we have to take a metal ring. And we have to take a solid metal ball. Now what we have to do is we have to see that this ball should pass through this ring. So here you can see before this ball is passing through this ring. Now what we have to do is we have to heat the ball. Now heat the ball and try to pass this ball after heating. So what you will see the ball is not passing after heating because it has expanded. Wo expand ho gaya, iski wajih se it is not passing through this ring. So from this we can conclude that the on heating the substance or the metals which are there they expands on heating and when you cool them after the time when you cool this thing when you cool the metal it will again pass through this ring. So we can say that the metals expands on heating and contracts on cooling. Now solid usually it expands due to heat and it comes back to the original state when you have removed the heat from that substance. But the extent to which they will expand it depends on metal to metal. Iron metal will expand differently. Aluminium metal will expand differently. So it depends metal to metal that how much the expansion will take place. Next is the expansion and contraction of liquid that will be because of the heat. So for this what we have to do is we have to take a conical flask and in that we will be taking water and we will be putting a rubber cork on top and on that we are putting two. One is the hollow tube and one is the thermometer. So two things we are inserting in it and on the lower part we will be putting the boiler. So what will be do? What will happen is that we have to after heating the water we have to check the temperature and uh, after every 2 degrees the rising in temperature we need to note down the reading that what is happening. Okay. So after doing this what we come to know is that when the liquid is heated so the distance between its particle it increases as the temperature is increasing so the distance between the particles which is there it also increases and its volume which is there that is also increases. So this is called as the expansion of liquid. The distance of the particle is increasing and the volume is also increasing. First the particles are very closely packed to each other and after some time you will see that as it is hot the particles the distance which is here in these particles it, uh, it expands and because of which the volume which is there of the water that also expands. So this is called as the expansion of liquid and when the temperature falls for example it again cools down the liquid again contracts all these particles which are there the expansion which took place the space which was there it will be again come close to each other. Now what will happen when we heat the gas so the expansion and contraction of gases also takes place when we heat a gas. So what happens is the volume of the gas which is there it increases on heating and this is called as the expansion. So here if you will see first the gas when it is cold the particles which are there they are close to each other. But when you heat the gas the particles which are there they move away from each other. So the volume of the gas it increases and the uh, gas which is there it expands. And when the gas cools down, when it will cool, so what will happen? It will again contract and it will again go back to its normal form. The volume of the gas, it will decrease. So this is called as the contraction of gas. So when the particles are moving away, the volume increases. That is called as expansion. When the particles come inside, they come close to each other, the volume of the gas which is there, that decreases. Then that is called as what? The contraction. This is called as expansion yani barna contraction yani apne position pe wapas aana. Thermo flask or you can also say as the thermos. Now in our homes we have thermos. We use thermos to keep the milk warm or water warm for a long period of time. Even we use it to keep uh, milk and water cold also for a long period of time. So this is called as a thermo flask. Now thermos was discovered by a scientist that was Sir James Dewar. And so these are also called as Dewar flask. 
Now, how they are made up of? So, a thermos flask, it consists of uh, two thin glasses. So, there are two thin glass bottles which are fit inside each other. So, first we have a layer of bottle and then we have the another layer of glass bottle. Now, the inner surface which is there of the bottle, that is covered with a silver coating or you can say a mirror. You can even, if you have a thermoflask, open that thermoflask, you will see that inside part is there. It is like mirror or a silver coating is there. And the vacuum is there between the two bottles. That is the outside bottle, which is the side pe bottle hai, and the inside bottle. Here, these are the two bottles. So, in between those two bottles, here and here, we have the vacuum inside here so this is the vacuum which is there inside now a plastic or a core lid is provided to fit the mouth bottle so here we have a covering the plastic lid which helps to so that the heat cannot uh, move away or go outside and these they helps in supporting that is provide the heat and uh, if you even heat it then also this thing will not let the heat pass out this is the structure of a thermoflask now we'll understand how the thermoflask work so as there is no medium in the vacuum between the two bottles so this is the reason no transfer of heat takes place that is there is no conduction and no convection which takes place and the heat which is reflected back inside from that shiny surface it is reflected among it only so because of that silver lining which is there inside so the reflection of the heat ka wo andar hi hoga and it will not go out and the glass and plastic are as they are bad conductors of heat so hence they do not transfer the heat either into the bottle or out of the bottle and thus the transfer of heat does not takes place by any of the three modes that is conduction se bhi heat transfer nahi ho raha hai convection se bhi and even through radiation and hence hot things which are there inside it always not always but for most of the time it remains hot or cold through a long time so what is the function of the thermoflask so now as heat is not transferred to the outer region so that means it can retain the heat for a long period so a little heat is lost from around the lid and by a small amount due to conduction through the glass therefore the hot substance does not remain hot after a 4 to 5 hours but for 4 to 5 hours it will remain hot and also so these type of materials or these type of thermos are used and they can be used to keep these uh, material that is food or water or uh, you know coffee tea for hot for a longer period of time 